One of the worst things you can have happen when you're painting a car is to get orange peel and or dust flecks in your paint. The problem is, in a place like Arizona where it's hot, even if you do everything right, you have a good chance of getting a level of orange peel like we've got on the car here. So we're going to show you how to take this from the orange peel to a gorgeous looking paint job without having to start over. you what the problem is which is very common when painting a car particularly at a high temperature Arizona being hot a lot of the time as I said we're going to show you how to fix it first thing you'll notice and you saw that in the intro I'm wearing nitrile gloves the reason I'm going to do that is because I'm going to wet sand this and in wet sanding it I am going to use water with Dawn dish soap in it Dawn dish soap at least for me will start to take my hands apart if I don't keep them covered so I'm going to wear gloves. Gloves therefore are optional, but I would think most people probably want to wear them. You'll also notice down here I put a piece of tape. I have not done a great job of putting the tape on. That's not the point of the tape. The point of the tape is just to keep me from sanding on the tail light because that section is fine so we don't want to sand there. And so we've got a piece of tape here. This is just regular blue tape you get at the hardware store. Now I'm going to start you through the process. The first thing we're going to do as we're going to sand this surface with 1000 grit sandpaper. So I'm going to grab that and we'll get going. Alright, here we have a brand new piece of 1000 grit sandpaper. Obviously you see it's 3M. When it comes to sandpaper I tend to prefer 3M to everything. It seems to be really the best thing compared to other brands. Particularly the brands coming out of China that have got no name on them. So I prefer 3M as a sandpaper. I'm going to start with a brand new piece. Some people would tell you you have to soak it for a while. I've not found that to be necessary. Now I also have two different pads I use. One, this is a flexible but fairly hard rubber pad. This is the side you would punch your sandpaper against and you're going to use that side to actually rub on the vehicle. This is a very soft one but it's very useful if you've got a lot of contour in something or you want to go around a corner like right in here. That's really useful to use that type of pad. You do not want to take your sandpaper and just sand the sandpaper in your hand. The end result is going to be all waves. So you can't do that. So don't do it. I also have my ancient cake pan here. It gets a little rusty and stuff, but it works really good for dipping this sandpaper in and getting the water. You can use a bucket, but I think the cake pan actually works better. So I'm going to start with the harder pad I showed you. And wrap the sandpaper. Sandpaper is actually one half of a sheet and I just wrap it around like that, dip it in my water, and I'm going to come up here and start sanding. Now if you're sanding on the roof, that's actually easier because it's very easy to do it one-handed. And you can do it one-handed here too, but if you find you're on a vertical surface such as a door panel, the way I'm sanding now using two hands is actually a little bit easier for you to do and get enough pressure to take the orange peel out. Now one of the keys to doing this is don't sand too long in one spot because if you do you may over sand and sand right through your clear coat because this is a base clear job. Now if you have a single stage you're not going to sand through the single stage as easy probably but you could depending on how much paint you stuck on the car. I'm going to tell you on base clear you want an absolute minimum of two coats of clear on the car. Don't even consider color sanding it. So you'll need to have a minimum of that. So when I paint a car with base clear, I would have two coats of base to three coats of base and two to three coats of clear. You can even put on more, but you may be making more work than you need. So as I said, usually Two is minimum, three is probably ideal. And you notice the direction doesn't totally matter. I just want to work against the surface. Now what I'm going to do now is what I do frequently. Here I have a bucket of soapy water. 
and you want a microfiber washcloth. Don't use anything else but a microfiber washcloth. Wring it out and we're going to take it over and what we're going to do is we're going to clean off what we've already done and see where we are. There's two reasons we're going to do this. Reason number one, we don't want to sand through. So you don't want to sand a long time when you're using the thousand grit in particular. Reason number two is we're going to evaluate where we are. Now, I've got water on here right now. We can't really tell what's going on, so we're going to dry it off. Then it's a good terry cloth towel or a microfiber towel would work fine. So I'm taking it off. Whether or not it picks up in the camera, I can see flaws. See flaws, particularly up here, I didn't go far enough up in this area. I've got flaws throughout here. Here, this whole section is still flawed. And it's flawed down over here. So it tells us that in a number of places we actually already got it down far enough. But other spots we don't. So now we're going to go back with a thousand grit and get rid of the basic orange peel with it. So we're going to take another turn with the thousand grit sandpaper. Back into our cake pan. Get our sandpaper wet. And I wasn't far enough on the top, so we've extended it on the top. And we're going to come down and we're going to work on the areas that we know aren't as good and work out the orange peel. I cannot stress enough, do not sand a long time without checking your work. You do not want to over sand. Gets a little too dry, go for a little more water. Another rule you want to keep in mind when doing this is if you have an edge, for example, even a rounded edge, but the sharper the edge, the less paint will be on the edge. So the more you are to an edge of something, do not sand as much there because you can sand through your paint easier. That's just the physics of how paint is going to get applied. No matter who's spraying it, it's going to be thinner on edges. Now up here I hadn't gone far enough up, so we're trying to go a little further up. Here I have a drip rail, and I'm actually keeping my fingers so I don't get clear to the drip rail, because I don't want to sand the paint off the drip rail. If you're going to sand behind a drip rail, that's one of the few times you would not use a sanding block, and you would just do the area just behind the drip rail after you've done all the rest of it. Okay, so we're going to take our wet rag and clean it off and do it again. Same process. Grab our towel and check our results. Now what we're seeing, there's still a little bit in here. There's still a bunch here. This is the worst area. That was the area with most nibs. I've got a little bit down through here now. I still have to go just a teensy bit more on the top. This time I've switched the softer foam pad because we do have a lot of curve on the panel. That will help me get some of this without making flat spots where I don't want it. I'm going through in one spot versus another. Okay, in this case, I'm three times through. I'm going to do a little more work down in here, and then we'll go on to our next step. So now we're going to go to 1500 grit. Some people go to 1200 grit in between. I found you can just go 1000, 1500. So we're going to go to 1500 grit. I'm going to wrap it around my little foam block and we're going to start sanding again. 
The idea here is actually to remove the thousand grit sanding scratches. The problem is, even for me having done this quite a bit, I can't tell totally visually that I've done the removal. But again, we're going to do the same sanding and washing process until we think it looks good enough, and then we will go on from there. When you switch grits, it's a good idea to go further than you did with your preceding grit. So if I stopped here, I would go above it. The reason we're doing that is so we don't end up with a line at some point that we don't want. We'll be back with you after we get the 1500 grit sanding done. Right, we've completed a 1500 grit sanding at the moment. Now, one of the things you can notice, but you cannot see it in the camera, I'm sure you can't. If I look at this at an angle now, it's already starting to shine for me. To you in the camera, it will look dull. Here we are with our next sandpaper, 2000 grit. This is our third sanding, we're doing 2000 grit this time. Same process as before, we wrap it around our foam sponge, or around our other block, depending on where we're working on the car. And we're going to sand it out again. I'm not going to make you watch all that. Just the same process repeated, but we are using 2000 grit. Next up, we have 3000 grit sandpaper. Now this is supplied by 3M also. It comes with its own foam pad. And it only lasts so long, it's actually three layers. There's a sandpaper, the foam pad, and a backing layer. But that's the way it comes, is three layers. And as I said, eventually it starts to peel off the back. But as long as it's still working, we're gonna use it. So I fold it in half, I've dipped it into my water and soap mixture, and you know, you can actually go around in circles at this point even. doesn't matter. By the time you're doing the 3000, it's more of a polishing job. So I don't find that you need to go any specific direction. Now we're going to wash it off again and see where we are. After having it rubbed down seriously with our 3000 grit sandpaper and our soapy water. One thing you notice about the process, it's messy. Now even from your vantage standpoint in the camera, you ought to be able to see that that's starting to look a little bit shiny. If I stand to the side, it's actually quite shiny. I don't know how many of you people know it, but there's 5,000 grit sandpaper. There it is from 3M, 5,000 grit sandpaper. Now in case, those of you who are watching don't know, 5,000 grit sandpaper, obviously you can find it on the internet. It's available through Amazon. There'll be sellers selling the 3M product on Amazon. So the last step here is the 5,000 grit, just like we did with the 3,000. And what I mean by last step, it's the last sanding step. And we're gonna 5,000 grit the whole thing. Now that we've done 5,000, we're going to wash it off one more time. So that's the last of the sanding steps. You get an idea of what it looks like. I'm going to take the tape out of here. It won't be necessary now. That shows you what it looks like after we've done all that sanding. Now in real life, we probably spent a good half hour at this. So this is not a short amount of time you're going to put into doing this to a car. Next two things you're going to need. 
3M Perfected Rubbing Compound. Now it comes in different sizes, so I'm not going to give you the number. It's called 3M Perfected Rubbing Compound. The different sizes will have different numbers, in other words. This is the compound you want to use at this point. You're also going to need one or two other things. You're going to need a little unit for polishing like this. This is a little air powered one. You definitely need this because there are spots on a car like this that you're going to have to have something small to work with. But if you are working on, for example, a roof or a door panel, you can use an electric polisher. This I will tell you, I wouldn't even look at the name, this is called Junk Chinese Garbage. I mean it works but the handle breaks practically immediately because it's like most Chinese things, it's very poorly made really. So I wouldn't recommend the brand, but I would recommend the polishing pads. This is a finishing pad from 3M and they also have a compounding pad. You have to have a compounding pad when you use the rubbing compound. When you're going to use the other compound we're going to show you, you would use the finishing pad. So if you have a full size buffer like this, you could use it on this. Okay, you could also use it on the roof, you could use it on the trunk panel. But anytime you got to get close to something, like in this area, you're going to need the little polisher. We're going to use the little polisher just because it's a small area, it's easier for you to see what's going on. We're using a little purple pad. You can get a set at like O'Reilly or other auto parts stores that includes this little purple pad. It also includes a black pad. The purple pad is the compounding pad. The black pad again is the finishing pad. It's a 3M product if you want to get the little ones like this. So we'll take some of our rubbing compound. Some people will tell you I'll set it on the surface and then spin the wheel on it by hand for example. I tend to like, and this is almost empty, so that's why I'm going to have to shake it down. I tend to like to just put some on the pad itself. So you can see I put a little stripe across it. And we're going to start polishing. Now I'm going to warn you, at any moment, I don't know when, the air compressor can go off. So it may get loud and that's all you're going to hear. Since the compressor hasn't turned on, let me tell you, notice I'm moving around. You do not stay in one spot. You stay in one spot, you will come up with something called burn through. Because really what this clear coat is, is that spray on plastic. And you will create so much heat, you'll melt the plastic. So you got to move around like I'm doing. And you notice that's only been a very short period of time. And watch when I take a microfiber towel. That is almost done in that area. Now I'm going to switch pads and show you the other compound to do the final finishing on it. Then I'll go about finishing the rest of this and let our videographer show you when it's done. Now this is what the 3M finishing pad for the small polisher looks like. That is a great product, works wonders. But I'm also going to tell you, you can go on Amazon, and this is one case where you could buy a set of Chinese pads that you can throw away for the same price you're going to probably invest in the two 3M pads and they're actually going to work. But they are going to throw away and not work as long. But you get so many of them it doesn't matter. Because the back of these is set up for Velcro which is how it attaches to my polisher. The 3M has good Velcro. The Chinese stuff has Velcro that wears out fast. But as I said because you get so many polishing pads you can just pitch them. So it's one of the cases where you could actually use the Chinese product because it doesn't matter. Here's one of the Chinese pads. Now it's neat that it's got those little bumps. It actually does great, especially when you get in corners, etc. It conforms to stuff. So that's really good. And as I said, I got a whole box of these. I think it was 36 for 20 bucks or something like that. It was ridiculously cheap. They were on Amazon. Here's the other item you need though. This is 3M Perfected EX Machine Polish. So it's 3M Perfected EX Machine Polish. And again, I'm not giving you the number only because the number corresponds to the size, so it's the name that you want, 3M Perfected EX Machine Polish. So we're going to use a little Chinese pad, we're going to throw it onto our small polisher here. You can really hear how good the Velcro is on the 3M products. And we're going to 
put on a bunch of our polish and I got quite a bit in here so we're going to put it on and you notice I like to put it on top of little bumps like that and now what we're going to do is polish now again at any moment the air compressor can go off You can see what's happened after we've done the final polish there and wipe that off with a microfiber towel. I still have to finish out the rest of this, which I'm going to do, and we'll let our videographer then show you. But you remember, and hopefully she will put the original shot in here and compare side by side so you can see where we've gone to. When we're all done with this whole area, I'll have put in about an hour on doing it. So the advantage of this goes this way. If you have this whole car painted and have a decent paint job, just a decent paint job, you're going to spend $4,000. If you have a show car paint job on it, you're going to spend $20,000. So the reason you might be interested in this is one, maybe you want to paint the car yourself just to say I did it, but two, you might be wanting to save a hell of a lot of money real fast by learning to paint your own car, doing it at home in your garage and or driveway, and learning how you can fix problems like I've shown you here. So I'm going to finish this out and you'll get to see this area all done.